Hi everyone and warm welcome to this uh, live tasting and masterclass mm. uh, where we're going to taste five different uh, reds from Austria uh, during around uh, 45 minutes. My name is Andreas Grube, I'm the editor at Star One List, the guide to great wine bars and wine restaurants. And Star One List is uh, presenting this, this tasting together with uh, Advantage Austria, which is the, um, the Sweden office of Austria's trade promotion organization. Uh, Advantage Austria, they have around uh, 100 offices in uh, 70 countries, uh, and they work to help Austrian companies finding new contacts and strengthen their business co connections through promotion, put sellers in contact with uh, potential agencies, and doing tastings like this. Uh, I'm also very happy to have uh, a great expert and um, uh, special guest by my side, which is Andreas Hiller, sommelier here Thank at uh, Heaven 23 in Gothenburg, where we are right now. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. And you're an Austrian expert as well, because uh, I know the Star One, um, Heaven 23, uh, they won Star One, the best Austrian wine list uh, in Star One list of the year, both in Sweden and the Nordics. Yes, that's correct. Why this focus on, on Austrian wine? Why, what's, what's, well, um, the easy answer is because the wines are so good. Hmm? The wines are good, uh, they're food friendly and uh, very varied. You hmm. have a lot of different styles and uh, types of wines. Uh, and also on a very limited area, I would say. Mm. I mean, if we were to focus on Italy or France, it's a very big countries. Austria is smaller. Uh, you have the close proximity from, I mean, if you start in Vienna, you have one hour drive to something like 13 different wine regions. It was quite fascinating, of course, yeah. yeah. And quite also uh, the, the price point is, is, is still pretty good too. Uh, it is. Uh, quite, compared to many other. Uh, but also, today we're going to focus on, on reds, five reds. Yes. Uh, what, 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 can, what, can you say something about the uh, development when it comes <coughs> to red? Because, I mean, Austria is, is, is mo mostly known for uh, white wines like Grüneveltliner and Rieslings and stuff. But what about the red wine scene in the country? Well, of course, they're mostly known for it, but they've been making red wines of good quality for a long time. It's nothing new. Uh, Trend-wise, I would say it's almost like the rest of the world. Mm. Uh, the trends are not national in that sense. I mean, the trends are more global. Uh, so the trends today is more towards the natural winemaking, uh, lower intervention. Uh, the lighter styles. The lighter, of, yeah, fresher yeah. style mm. of wines, uh, lower ad added sulfur. That's a trend in Austria as well, in the rest of, uh, as well as in the rest of the world, but maybe a little bit stronger in Austria, I would say. Okay, yeah. When talking about red wines, I think uh, the uh, indigenous grapes yeah. are coming back strongly. We're going to taste uh, a couple of them uh, at least uh, later are. on. Uh, but also, uh, just before we get into the wines, how big is the, the red wine production in Austria compared to, to uh, white wines? What do you say? Well, Austria today uh, cultivates something around uh, between 45,000 and 50,000 hectares. Uh, and the red variety is, is just short of 15,000 hectares. And that's also okay. including, of course, the rosé wines. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Maybe 25 percent red, I would say. Oh, huh? cool. Give or take. So let's uh, get started. I mean, we want to drink wine now, of course. <laughs> we're, we're, that's what Please. we're here for. So <laughs> we're going to start off with uh, with this one. It's a uh, wine called uh, Markovic Pinot Noir Classic. They have uh, more wines in their range, but this is uh, sort of the entry level range. Can you call it like that? I would, yes. Yeah, but but how, how common is is Pinot Noir in Austria? I would say. Well. It's somewhere around the seventh or eighth uh, in, in, growed, in growth mm, size. Mm, mm. Uh, so it's not very big. No. It's about 600 hectares in total out of the 15,000 for red varieties. Mm. Uh, but still, if you look at Systemologet, yes. it's very big. The Swedish monopoly, for yeah. those of you who are not, not Swedish. Yeah. It's not very big at all. Uh, Austrian reds, in, in general, uh, are not very very common uh, at the monopoly. No, not at all. No, no. Uh, but w w what would you say before we taste it? Uh, could you? Uh, are there any specific characteristics when it comes to Pinot Noir from from Austria compared to uh, other countries, like also the neighbors? I mean, say Germany or whatever. Of course, it's in generalization, but if it's, you it's could a, say something... It's a generalization. I, I mean, for, for me, the difference between a Pinot Noir from, let's say, a Cantal in Niederösterreich and the western part of Niederösterreich compared with a 
the Pinot Noir from Vienna mm. and one from Canuntum are, are different. Very different. Uh, and also, same with the wine from, from Burgenland. So, no, I, I, maybe 15, 20 years ago, I would say they had this little bit heavy oak. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that was from that era. Today, yeah. the wines are fresher, and I find it difficult to have one specific common that we, we, yeah. in, in Austrian Pinots. So let's taste this one and say yeah. what we think. What's what's uh, what about the nose and the palate? What, what would you say about it? The nose is fresh. Uh, of course, nice red berries, mm. perhaps a little bit of rose. Mm. Uh, quite, quite sort of um, mature berries as well. Yeah. As a, like um, or, or ripe. It's, yeah, it's like the, the correct term to it. And. Um, Nice, nice roundness in the mouth as well. It's just um, yeah, it is. Quite it's quite silky. Mm. And some nice length to be yeah, said. Yeah, well, yeah. I would say. Yeah. You mentioned uh, Canuntum, and this wine is is is, uh, is from Canuntum. What could you say? It is. It's not on the label, but no. in fact, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, we're going to taste another one. The next one is 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 also for Canuntum. So so we just could you just uh, tell me tell us something? The Canuntum about the region is is a is a district uh, south of Vienna. And very close to the Hungarian border. It's mm. part of the uh, Lower Austria, uh, but just between Vienna and uh, Burgenland. Mm. Uh, it's uh, affected both from the Pannonian climate, the, the warm winds from the east, yeah. giving a little bit of warmth to the region, but also uh, cooling effects from the Danube yeah. and uh, yeah. from the Neusel Lake as mm. well. So would you consider it a, a cooler area or a sort of Medium cool or, or medium cool. I, medium I would cool. say f for it's for me more like the uh, the Burgenland in some aspects yeah. compared to other parts of of Lower Austria, especially if we talk about the Kamptal, Kremstal, Wachau, yeah. which, which yeah. is uh, much more focused on, on white wines. This is the best si the best part of Lower Austria for reds, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Just briefly about the producer called uh, Gerard Markovic. Uh, they own um, 35 hectares and works with uh, um, another also works with f like 40 hectares that they buy from from different growers uh, and 75 percent of their production is actually red wine which is interesting uh, since we mentioned the, the compared to 25 if you 25 30 in, in Austria in general so so but but um, what, what what kind of food would you um, would you pair with this wine or would well, you serve? we are in Gothenburg, yeah. So why not nice piece of pan fried cod oh, with some sounds uh, lovely, with some bacon mm? and, and uh, red wine juice and some mushrooms, mm? Mm? something like that. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what about like um, now we're using this, uh, a sort of tasting glass? Would you would you what comes to temperature and glassware in general? What, what, how, what, how would you prefer to serve it? This wine, of course, uh, would go a little bit lower than room temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, something like 15, 16 for me would be mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. uh, could work with the sort of a burgundy balloon shaped yeah. glass. Yeah. Uh, could be the obvious choice yeah. for this. But uh, also a personal question how, how many times have you been to, to Austria? Uh, since, we started, sure. since I started working with Austrian wines uh, in 2006, I've been. Uh, well, I wasn't there for last year. <laughs> no, no. <all laughs> I've been reasons. there, uh, I think it's 14 or 15 times since 2007. Okay, that's quite, quite a lot. And how many, how many I mean, since um, Heaven 23, you're very big on, on Austrian wines. Um, how, how, how much of, 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 of your wine list is, is reds? Uh, I don't know the correct percentage, no. but I would say... Uh, we have a more demand for white wines, both regarding our cuisine and also about what, what people ask for and what yeah. we think works. So we have more whites than red, yeah. but uh, it's not that it's it's not tricky to find a red Austrian wine. We have a lot of those. You well. have a lot of those. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, let's continue to uh, the next wine, which is uh, also from Canuntum, as we mentioned. This is Dorlimur. Dorlimur. Uh, uh, and and this is uh, this is a blau frankish. Uh, what, can, what can you tell us about blau frankish, uh, the grape variety and the characteristics? It's the second most planted 
red grape variety in Austria, uh, around 3,000 hectares, uh, and uh, also personal favorite, huh? I would say. Why? Uh, well, it's, it's, I think, the quality, uh, the freshness, uh, and also you find, for me, I often find a lot of sort of herbal notes mm. in the wine. Mm. Uh, I think it works really well as well, combining with other grape varieties, so, so have the Blaufrankisch as a base, and adding maybe some international variety to it as well. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, so it's an important grape in Austria, but it's also grown a, around in middle Europe, I would say, mid-Europe. Yeah, uh, with, with Europe. different names uh, in different countries as well, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. most known, of course, is the Kekfrankos from Hungary, uh, meaning the same thing. Yeah, yeah. quite popular these days, uh, at least in, uh, yeah. in here. Uh, and you, 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 you mentioned uh, herbal notes, and uh, yeah. really a lot of the, the herbals uh, in, in this, when, when, you, when you smell this wine, right? I think so, yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, uh, you just mentioned about Dorley Moore. Uh, she she started actually started off uh, with a, with PR and marketing uh, um, before heading into wine in the early two thousands. And uh, she, um, I mean, from the start, she just wanted to put put um, emphasis. Uh, I mean, just want to show elegance and pureness and freshness in, in her wines, which she does really, really well. This is an extremely so. elegant. Uh, Expression of La Frankish and then just a very, very beautiful wine in, in, in general. It just uh, yeah, it's drinks so well, course. so well. But uh, the the area this is Tenuntum, which we talked about in the first wine. This is also a, a, a sub region called Spitzberg. Spitzberg, yes. Yeah? What can you tell us about that? Spitzberg is, is it sounds like a pointy mountain, which is not actually, it's more like a rolling hill, but mm-hmm. it's. Uh, it's just sort of the meeting point between the most easterly part of the Alps mm. and the most westerly parts of the, I think, the Carpathian mm. Mountains. Um, and also, uh, if we go to some sort of mid-period of geology, yeah. uh, the, uh, it was the shore. So it's a lot of uh, limestone. Huh? And, and uh, I think you can feel that in the wine as yeah. well, actually. Yeah. Uh, Probably some of the fruit are from this this part of, of Canonto. Mm. But would you say this is a um, uh, would you say this is a typical expression of uh, Blau Frankish or uh, um, that you usually uh, well, pinpoint it's, uh, in a blind it's, tasting? It's, uh, it's a not really a typical expression. We could mention that it's not a hundred percent Blau Frankish no. in this wine. It's also uh, some Syrah. It's, in it's, it's actually, actually some Syrah, yeah. um, and also it's. Uh, it's a cl- cooler climate yeah. than if you go down to Mittelbogenland, for instance, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. we also grow a lot of Blaufrankisch, uh, which tends, tends to be a little bit uh, fatter soils, like more mm-hmm. clay soils, and also giving a more uh, more warmth to the wine. I think. Okay, okay. So th- those are a little bit richer often. Uh, and and um, what, what would you pair with the Blaufrankisch? What would be a perfect choice on the menu? Well, lamb. Could be an option, mm-hmm. an option for mm-hmm. me uh, for this. Maybe just a classic lamb roast, uh, yeah. some green beans. Super good. Doesn't need anything more, I think. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but but uh, can you t- do you know anything about the sort of the the, the trends when it comes to blau Frankish? Is, is it is it a is it a grape that that is grow growing in popularity, or is it just a sort of staying on the same same level, or is it dropping? Or do you know anything about what? Between like 2010, 2015, we saw a slight decline actually in the in the volume mm-hmm. of the grown area. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that has turned around. I don't have any actual figures. Oh. It's just a yeah, gut yeah. feeling yeah, yeah. Uh, that uh, people are talking more about, more about uh, indigenous grapes mm-hmm. and about, for, in this case, Blaufrank is a typical example of that. Yeah. Uh, so the interest is more on that. Yeah. Theme, I would say. So, I, and also, it's an interesting grape variety for me internationally. I think there could be many places in the world where you could see yeah, good, yeah. good blau Frankish. But, but, but is it a is it a, is it a grape that that is easy to work with? Uh, that is, I mean, is it tolerant to to, to diseases and, and and warmth and and uh, draft draft and uh, and everything, or, or is it? It's complicated grape. It's, it's not complicated and no. it's not easy. It's just, you know. Just a grape. 
<laughs> in the <laughs> middle. Great variety. Yeah. Of course, there, there's problems with Balfrankish as, as with many many grapes, but uh, it's not especially hard to no? make. No, no, it's not. Okay. Um, we're going to move on to to wine number three, and I'm just going to mention if I didn't, uh, I, I think I missed that in the beginning. But uh, if you have uh, questions, you can just write them in in the uh, in the comments or uh, in the in the event and. Uh, Maybe we'll get them up here and we'll answer as many as we have time to and can, if we can answer. The third wine is uh, Domain Gobelsburg, uh, and it's a Zweigelt. It's also an, uh, an interesting grape. It is. Variety, yeah? What can, what, can, what can you tell us about that? Well, it's a, it's a crossing between the grape we just tried, yeah. Blau Frankisch, mm -hmm. and uh, another indigenous Austrian grape, St. Laurent. Mm -hmm. It was uh, created by Dr. Fritz Zweigelt in the 1920s. So it's it his last yeah. name. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And when was that? You... In 1922. 1922. And uh, originally it was named Rotburger. So you can still see that on some, la some labels. Okay. Some producers okay. chose okay. to label it that way. Yeah. Uh, but since 1971 also, uh, Zweigelt is, is a legal name for it. All right, all right. Uh, and uh, when it comes to characteristics and, and um, I mean, no, no some palate for, for Zweigelt, what would you say in, 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 first of all, in general and second in, in, in general, I'd say the wines are a little bit more purple than uh, the previous, the Blau which we had mm -hmm. just before. Mm -hmm. And also the, the berry structure, the berries, I mean, I find a lot of dark and purple berries in, in Zweigelt in general. Yeah. But I can also find Often, especially in younger wines, with, with uh, perhaps made with steel, uh, yeah. steel that's you find a little sort of inky note for mm -hmm. me. Uh, I don't know if you have it here, but uh, well, maybe when you when you, when you mention, it. I get sort of like uh, blackberries and also blueberries in this one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's quite um, very very uh, tasty as well. Mm. This is um, super easy drinking. I, just, I, I love this. It's really just goes down. Yeah. Easily. Seamless. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seamless. Um, also about the uh, Schloss Gobelsburg. Uh, they're in Kamptal. Yes. Yes. And what can you tell us about Kamptal? Kamptal is, is a region that is, I would say, mainly known for the white wines, especially... They hold the DAC status for, for Riesling and Grünefeldliner. Mm. Uh, but they make a lot of different grape varieties in the Kamptal. Mm. Uh, so Zweigelt is not a big thing there, I'd say. Uh, but still, they make good ones. Okay. Uh, Kamptal what, what is... Sorry, is, sorry. Is, sorry what, what would you say? What, which, one, which region is the biggest one for Zweigelt, if it's not? Kamptal. Zweigelt, it, it's Burgenland. And it's Burgenland. It's, it's mm. Neusilesi for me, mm. Uh, mm. the eastern side. Mm. Uh, but also in Kamptal... You, uh, we are in the northwest, yeah. Sort of from from the Vienna, we're northwest by Vienna, an hour drive, and it's significantly cooler than I would say than the Carnuntum region, which we tried uh, before. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's deep soils with a lot of less yeah. uh, less soils. Yeah. Uh, could you mention the as you mentioned less? Could you just uh, explain for those uh, who not don't know uh, less uh, as a soil type? Yeah, it's a sandy, loamy uh, type of soil. Mm. Uh, so if if we have in, in Krenstal and, and Wachau, the other two neighboring and famous districts in the lower Austria, uh, we have a lot more of the uh, Ulgestein, the more rocky mm. uh, soils. Mm. And less is a little bit fatter in style, I would say. So more okay, of, so a little more more body yeah. in the wine. It's okay. Um, and how widely grown is Zweigelt in, in Austria today? It's the most grown red variety. It's the most grown yeah. red variety. So uh, accounting for like 14% of the total area. Okay. Uh, so it's number two after Grüne Fettlina, actually. Oh, okay. And there's also quite a lot of um, nice rosés uh, made with yeah. Zweigelt as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, we mentioned uh, Schloss Gobelsburg, the producer. I also uh, say that um, it's uh, since 1996. It's run by uh, Michael Moosbrugger. 
Yeah. And they have around uh, 25 hectares of, of, of uh, vineyards, mostly green and ventilator, as, as Andreas mentioned, around 50%, and then also around 25%. But they also uh, produce quite some high quality reds as we, as we have here. What would you, um, if we go back to, to food pairing, food and wine pairing, for a, a typical uh, grape pairing for, for Zweigelt, what would that be? Well, it depends on, on the style of the Zweigelt. Mm. Uh, for me, this wine is, is it's round, it's seamless, it's very easy drinking, mm. it's a very nice wine, mm. uh, but I, perhaps I would have more like a boiled meat, perhaps some ox cheek or something with mm. root vegetables mm. for this wine. Uh, and if you have a even more full-bodied and, and perhaps a little bit more structured Zweigel, mm. you go for the, the red meat. Uh, oh. But for me, not maybe not this one. Maybe not this one. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it? We have uh, a question here. Uh, you you mentioned D A C. What is yeah. that? Oh, it's Latin, which I can't pronounce. <laughs> but it <laughs> but stands for it? Districtus Australis Controllatus, more or less. Uh, it's the, it's. They are changing the wine laws in Austria. I've been doing that since 2003 through 2004, mm -hmm. uh, going from the more Germanic way of, of uh, presenting the wines with perhaps the grape variety and the village or the uh, yeah, yeah. or the district. And now you want to uh, do it more like they would say, we do it in Chianti or Chablis. Yeah, okay. You see uh, an origin on the label and you should know what style of wine to expect. I get it. Okay, okay. Well, that's, yeah, take some time. Take some time, yeah. I guess, to, to adjust to that, but uh, okay. Um, also, um, when it comes to oak aging, uh, if we, if we, if we, if we the, the two, um, the Blau Frankish and the Zweigelt, how could you just, um, how, do, how do they work with oak? How, are they oak friendly or do they uh, work best without? Or I think, I think they're oak friendly uh, in the same way as, as, as other grape varieties are oak friendly mm -hmm. for me. It's all about the quality of the fruit mm -hmm. and the richness. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have, a, if you have high yields and, and uh, fruit that are, that are not very strong and opulent, mm -hmm. uh, it's tricky to give it too much oak because the oak would kill the, the fruit in the wine. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same here as everywhere else. You need good quality fruit, uh, then you can absolutely work with, with oak. Yeah. I mean, the Zweigelt, for instance, is, is made with oak. It's uh, a very big a big, big cost, yeah, yeah. five to six thousand liters, yeah, if I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, and it's old oak, so there you just have the micro oxidation. I mean, exactly. Uh, but I mean, it's... It, I, if I remember correctly, it's it's still it's like around fifteen months. But I mean, I mean, yeah. it's a big, uh, big uh, vat, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah. So, so you, it's 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 not a very oaky feeling at all. No, and uh, not not with the Dolomura either. Actually, um, I mentioned uh, also that uh, for those of you, uh, if you want to know more about the wines, we have. Uh, they're listed in the comments in the, in the Facebook and YouTube events, and uh, they're also um, we also they're also listed on StarmanList.com, of course. Yeah, let's move on to the to the fourth wine. This is Schwarz Kumarod. Yes. This is uh, this is a blend. Uh, what would you say? This is a blend of uh, it's seventy percent Zweigelt, it's fifteen Blau Frankish, and fifteen percent Merlot. Yeah. And if we uh, first of all blends how common is that in, in in austria once again i don't have any numbers i don't know no, if there no, exist uh, any numbers but mm. but absolutely it's common uh, especially in this sort of southern part of lower austria like anuntum and down in the uh, in the burgenland area mm. uh, in 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 the northwestern part of Kamptal and also down in styria i would say you work mainly with uh, one grape mm. Uh, but in between, a lot of blends. Okay, and also fifty percent Merlot. Is that a is that a common grape? I mean, how 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 common is that in? in it is rather common. It's oh? actually grown on a just tiny, but still slightly higher uh, amount of hectares than the Pinot Noir. Which okay, it's the even more than okay. It's even more, but it's mainly used. Of course, you can find Monazepach, single variety example of of the Merlot, but it's often made exactly this way. 
have a base of Zeigel or Blau Frankish, and you add a little bit of perhaps the other one, which you didn't use as the base. Yeah. So perhaps like this is a typical example. Yeah. 70% Zweigelt, 50% Blau Frankish, and then a little bit of Merlot. Yeah. And if you if you, if we taste it, what what what's the, well, take us through the the notes on the palate? If we uh, what do you say about it? For me, it's a little bit deeper, darker fruit on the nose, uh, and also I think you could uh, feel the oak on the nose a little bit more mm -hmm. compared mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the other wines. Mm -hmm. A little more uh, like uh, licorice or um, yeah. the kind of um, spices as well. It's also very, um, very round. Has quite some body to it, I would say. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit of structure as well. Yeah, I'd yeah, say. yeah. I don't know uh, about the the oak. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I do know. It's matured for uh, on oak for for 12, 12 months. But I don't know how big the casks are or uh, if they're old. I think it's a little bit of a I think it's a mix. Both. Yeah, uh, I think so too. Old and and the uh, some of the wines from from the Schwarz family. We are that's the producer. Yeah, uh, in Andau, they have a, a Zweigel that gets 100% new oak, uh, and uh, generally speaking, I would say that most producers use used oak to other wines. Uh, after they have yeah. it for, for the so the Schwarz Rot get 100% new oak, and then you use those for the for the other ones. Yeah. Okay. It was also a quite interesting story about the the producer. It's uh, Hans Schwarz, yeah. uh, the name, of, and and he uh, is actually a former butcher and he started making wine. And Kumarod, uh, which is the name of this one, it means friend. And it's it's a tri tribute to to his friends uh, the, who talked him into to, uh, to, starting, making, wine, to, to yeah. making wine, and here in Sweden on the Monopoly we have we have um, from the same producer uh, both a red one and a white one that's called the Butcher actually. Yeah. So so yeah, it's a, no, interesting. Have you been there? I haven't been there. Huh? I haven't huh? even been to Andal. No, <laughs> it's a shame. I'm sorry. But it's, it's and uh, and this is Burgenland. This is which Burgenland. we mentioned earlier. On so, the okay. very as, as almost as far east in Austria as you can get. Mm -hmm. And now in the village where Schwarz make the wine, it's Hans and it, actually the son Michael, so, who's doing the wines at the moment since 2018, which we have here. Uh, Andau is just two kilometers from the Hungarian border. Oh, that close on the eastern okay. side of mm -hmm. Moisés. Mm -hmm. And and what, what about the the sort of the the, the climate and the, or the microclimate or whatever you call it? What 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 are uh, Warm, cold, a lot of rain, a lot of sun. I mean, Austria will never be southern Spain. <laughs> but for Austria, Burgenland is a warmer region, mm. uh, especially on the eastern side. Mm. Uh, you get the, the Pannonian winds from yeah. the east. Mm. Uh, it's almost flatland for very long uh, okay. on the over Hungary, so uh, it's warm area. Andau is the warmest village in all of Austria. It is. It is. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, because also if, if we compare this one, which is seventy percent Blau Frankish, and the other grapes we've mentioned, but also this wine uh, is seventy percent Blau Frankish, and the rest Syrah. It's a. Uh, but this is seventy percent Zweigelt, isn't it? Uh, it's uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's true. Sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's why you have an expert with you in a, in a, in a master class. Uh, so, what would you pair? What would you eat for, with this wine? This one, I think, have the. Uh, I mean, we can go for something a little bit more like a steak mm? in my world. Mm? Uh, so, um, yeah. And 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 what and. Uh, between the grapes, if we're talking about the indi indigenous uh, Blau Frankish and Zweigelt, which one would be the most, um, which one would you keep the longest? That is a good question. Hmm? Uh, and I don't know if I have the correct answer, but I, mean, just I, would, your I, opinion. Would, I would say Zweigelt. Yeah? Yeah. I would because say Zweigelt. I think maybe in... in and the best example of Zweigelt, it's a little bit more structure. Yeah. Okay. Zweigelt, uh, 
from correct producer, it's no problem for them to get 20 years old or even no. even more than that, no. 30 as well. Uh, whereas Blair Frankish, well, I would like to have them before they turn 15, perhaps. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think it's also interesting with all these wines, we know now we tried four of them, uh, that they're showing, they're very, very drinkable. Yeah. Now, I mean, it's 2008 and it's uh, it's nine. Uh, it's 18 all, 18 all, all over, over yeah. And it's, I mean, they're showing so, so well. Yeah. We, and I like that with wine, that you don't have to keep them forever. Uh, we have a question here from, uh, from Peter. He asks, a lot of wines from Austria uh, has a cap seal, uh, which has a red and white stripe. Does that mean anything except the colors of the flag? It does. All of these wines have it. Uh, that's the, <coughs> you have that if they're... What do you call it? Quality wine. Qualitets mm. wine. Mm. Mm. Okay, so, so that's... All Qualitets uh, wine have that. Uh, if you have a, a... You see more of those wines today than we did just a few years back yeah. uh, without that. That tends to be a, sort of a natural, perhaps, wine making. Oh, okay. uh, not reaching the quality levels that is acquired. Oh, okay. Simple as that. We also see that uh, three of these wines have uh, a screw cap. Yeah. Uh, it's quicker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but is that, uh, is that uh, because it's qu quite common in Germany as well. Yeah. Uh, but in, in Austria, would you say that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a growing thing or it's uh, just... Um... I think many producers use screw cap. Many mm. producers use natural core. Mm. Uh, I don't see very much diam. No. Uh, but I do see a lot of gloss. Corks yeah, in, in a lock, or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, really that's very, uh, very smooth to 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 handle. I think yeah. I love the, the the glass cork. It's super nice. Uh, I think we should um, finish off with some sweet, as you always do, uh, and taste the uh, Kracher Auslese Zweigelt, uh, also 2018. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, what is this Auslese? What does that mean for those who don't know? So, simply put, it's a later harvest. Mm. Uh, so, Aus is something like uh, uh, out or off. Mm. Uh, and the Lese is, is red. So, you read the wines later, you pick the wines later. So, it's hand harvest uh, mainly, and you pick the very mature grapes, mm. uh, cluster by cluster, more or less, mm. uh, with a higher uh, sugar level in, in the grapes. Yeah. To be able to make a sweet wine. Okay, okay. And uh, how I haven't uh, mostly I've tasted um, sweet wines made of white varieties. Yeah. And here we have a red one. How how common is that in, in Austria? There are some producers doing red wines, sweet red wines like this. Auslese or the Beeren Auslese. Occasionally, even talking about our laser from Zweigelt uh, is not very common, but it happens. Yeah, it's yeah. always someone doing it. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, the most of the most of the sweeter red wines are either some sort of pasito method, method okay. where you dry the grapes before, uh, or if we talk internationally, yeah, yeah. Uh, or fortified wines. Of so course, like port. A lot of red like sweet wines, but mm. not very many made in this style. No, no. This is also quite, quite. it's uh, 9.5 in alcohol. Uh, yeah. And uh, how would you describe it, the, 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 the taste? Uh, the, the, it's 9.5% in alcohol. It's 100 gram residual sugar, give or take a few mm -hmm. commas yeah. or something. <laughs> and and uh, so, so you harvest it very very mature level yeah at least uh, yeah we, not, let's not go in there but uh, the wine for me is, is has both red berries and freshness uh, yeah. and still a lot of it's a be uh, this is um, beautiful I just um, mm. and it's also it's, it's. I mean, it's yes. It's it's sweet. Um, it is sweet, and it's ripe red berries and all. But it's also refreshing. Yeah, it's amazing. Nice acidity mm -hmm. and uh, very good balance. I would yeah. say. Yeah, uh, and this is also from Burgenland, right? It is. It's 
just like 20 kilometers west of Anda, where we just were, yeah. uh, in, in the village, so the town of Ilmitz. Ilmitz. So, but is, is Burgenland a t- typical uh, region for, for sweet, sweet wines? Uh, I mean, or, or, is it, or is it equal uh, all over the, the, the country, you would say? No. For me, some of the best sweet wines in the world come from Burgenland mm. and from this precise area. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you have uh, quite a few... Uh, Kracher wines at, you, at the wine list in at Heaven 23. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we will have one later. <laughs> we will. <laughs> um, but also, so so. Um, the, I mean, uh, what's what's your opinion about Austrian sweet wines compared to sweet wines from 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 other parts of the world? The wines, if we go up even to perhaps Trockenbjerna's lesser level, uh, which are very late harvested shriveled grapes mm. affected by noble rot, mm. or the equivalent on the western part around the free town of Rust, where we have the Rust Ausbruch, which is, let's say, also Trockenbjerna's lesser. Mm. Some of those wines are absolute bird loss. Yeah. In my opinion, there is no better re- sweet wine in the world to find, mm. really. It's mm. top of the line. And we kept this one in in the in the fridge for a while. Yeah. Uh, would you? Is it your opinion that you should serve uh, sweet wines like this or sweeter wines like this, uh, a little bit co- cooler? Yes, I think so. Perhaps not directly from the fridge, uh, like where you have your milk at six degrees, <laughs> might be a little too cold. Yeah. Take it out a little bit in advance, mm. but absolutely cooler mm. than the red wines. The red wines for me, I would go with like sixteen. Uh, this perhaps like twelve. Yeah. Yeah. And also, Zweig, is, is that a typical uh, grape variety for, for sweet wines in Austria? Or do, you, do people uh, produce sweet wines on, um, from, from like Blaufränkisch as well? Or is it, is it the grape that's it's very... Blaufränkisch is, is not common. If you do no. sweet wines from a red variety, so to say, mm. uh, Zweig is the one I see. Mm. I really don't see anything else. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's the classic green varieties. Yeah, like so a lot of uh, Neuburg and Welsh Riesling and so Grünefeld uh, Riesling and yeah, mm. those kind and of Muscat. Oh, ah, yeah, of course, of course. And this is also, I mean, uh, now we're uh, now we have had our meats, we had our fish, and all, and now we're going in for dessert. Um, w- w- what's a classic pairing here at Heaven Twenty Three for a wine like this? For a wine like this, I would go with perhaps lighter style of chocolate, mm. uh, or and or uh, some red berries. Uh, for me, it's always important when you pair a sweet wine with, with food, that the wine is sweeter than the, mm. than the food. So mm. this, for me, doesn't have enough sugar to go with, let's say, creme brulee. No? I would say no. the wine would come across as a little bit sour, perhaps, Yeah. because you need more, you need more sugar, more sugar yeah. in the wine mm. compared to the, to the dessert mm. in this case. Uh, but the lighter style of chocolate, cherries, mm. raspberries, Maybe like Somewhere a there. vanilla panna cotta or something like that. Yeah, really yeah, nice. yeah. yeah. Milk chocolate panna cotta. Milk chocolate, yeah, yeah. Oh, even better. Yeah, <laughs> even better. Uh, but do you sell uh, a lot of sweet wines uh, in general here? No, at way no. too few bottles of wine. Uh, people wines. are scared of sweet yeah. wines. Yeah. People tend to say they don't like sweet wines. No. Occasionally, I have the possibility to uh, prove them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know people are kind of scared. Um, uh, we have another question here. Uh, apart from desserts, what would work uh, well as a as a as a, a pairing for sweet wines? Apart from from really like sweet desserts, would it be like cheese or, or uh, cheese? Of course, is an obvious idea. Yeah. Uh, pairing with sweet wines uh, in general, I don't drink. I tend not to drink red wine very often with my with my cheese. No? It's, it's white wines with some or more mm. sweetness, mm. Uh, but also. Uh, the classic combination of foie gras and oh, dark liver wow. mm. is can't, Super good. can't ignore that. <laughs> no. But also for me, I sometimes I I can find a, a wine with the obvious botrytis note uh, working very very good with the yellow curry. Oh, that's so interesting have, like, too. I, I had some lovely pan fried scallops with a rather deep uh, yellow curry uh, sauce. That is interesting. Paired yeah. with uh, Trockenbeeren Auslöser. 
Sounds really good. Delicious. Uh, what, what do you what would you say about sort of the the future of of um, especially Austrian red wines? What what, what are the uh, if you I mean just your opinion since you know the country quite well? Uh, is it is it are the red wines? Is it a growing thing? Uh, and is particular grapes that you see uh, are um, on the rise? Any obstacles? I'd say that I believe that Austrian red wines should have a very good chance at, at sort of a global market. Mm -hmm. the, the obstacles is the same as it is for Austrian wine in general, I would say. Uh, a lot of the growers are small, family-run businesses. Uh, the, the volumes they make are, are very limited. Uh, but for, for people in general who's interested in wine... They tend to seek new things yeah. and try grapes that they haven't seen before. And I mean, the Blaufränkisch, the Zweige, the St. Laurent are right up that alley. I, I yeah. think they should be really in the name. People would really see those wines and try yeah. them. And I think the... Uh, I agree. And I think it's quite interesting because all the, the, the five wines that we tasted today, uh, I mean, I could drink each one of them, just grab a bottle and drink it on my own. Yeah. Uh, and they're also very, very food friendly. It's just you just can do whatever you want with it. Just um, drink the bottle or, or, or pair it with food. Yeah. And that's uh, that's also a, it's For very me, that's versatile. important as well. I mean, yeah. a lot of wines are in some styles are very food friendly, but it's not very nice to drink before or after. No. And in general, when I have a glass of wine or a bottle of wine, mm. uh, even. Sometimes sharing it. <laughs> um, Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I have a wine before, and then I eat with the wine, and yeah. then I have wine left yeah. after I finish the dish. The dish, and if, if the wine only works with the dish, and it's, I, I need it to be nice all the way. It should should, should work all over. Uh, we have a question. Uh, we have time for one more question here from from Hong Kong. When it comes to uh, a service sequence, uh, Zweigelt, Saint Laurent, and Blau Frankish, similar price range. Which one should we serve first? I would go for the St. Laurent first. Huh? Uh, nine times out of ten, absolutely. Why? Uh, tends to be lighter, more on the red fruit. Mm? Uh, Blau Frankisch uh, as number two. Mm? Uh, and uh, often I find Zweigel to have a little bit deeper, darker fruits coming in as okay. number mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, it's time to, to round up and just, just go through the wines we had. We had the Markovic Pinot Noir Classic. Yeah, uh, nice to try. And you said that Pinot Noir was the eighth. Yeah, something of, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And we had the, the Carnunta from Dolimur, um, mainly Blau Frankish, but also with a dash of Syrah. And the Mein Gobelsberg, Zweigelt. Yeah. Really, uh, yeah, yeah, nice. So, you like that one? Yeah, I, I like that. I can tell. And also, <laughs> I, I like the all of them, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're showing super good. And we had the Schwarz, which was a blend. It was... Uh, Zweigelt, I said wrong. This was Zweigelt and uh, and uh, La Frankish and Merlot, yeah, and the beautiful sweet wine, the Auslese Zweigelt from from uh, This was uh, amazing. Uh, if you 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 can still write write some questions in 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 the event, and we'll uh, we'll have a glass uh, afterwards here and maybe try to answer uh, if there are any questions left. So so uh, with that, I want to say thanks a lot for participating. Uh, Check out starwinelist.com if, if you uh, want, want to do it. There we have also listed the wines. And you can, of course, find Heaven 23 listed there and the wine list from Heaven. Of course. The very uh, the great Austrian wine list. Also, check out Advantage Austria at advantageaustria.org. Uh, and um, with that, cheers and goodbye and have a lovely evening. Cheers. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Andreas. It was a pleasure. <laughs>